Thank you, DJ, and welcome everybody to this month's webinar for our October for Total Quilter and My Decorative Quilter. As DJ said, we're going to be doing a Ladybug coin purse. It's a completely in the hoop project, which is nice, and uh, it was designed for you by Rita Gazard and presented by myself, Mark Garretts. I'm a National Oriani educator. You know, I always like to show you a picture of what we're headed towards. I uh, just clicked my mouse and nothing happened. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it did. To the it did slide. progress. I do see the oh, ladybug. It oh, it, it's just a little laggy here. Okay. So um, there's the ladybug picture. It's a coin purse with a zipper in the center and some decorative dots and a little uh, head on the ladybug there. And um, this is what it looks like. And it has a piece of SoFab foam in it. That's our a fusible foam that allows it to have some dimension and stability and little cushioning. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the software section of today's webinar. And before we get into the actual steps of the software, I just want to go over a few things with you. First of all, if you've been watching these webinars, you probably know that we have uh, the software has usually been split into two parts. One part for those of you that own Total Quilter, which we do live uh, in the webinar, and the other part, which is for those of you that still have my decorative quilter, we usually refer you back to the printed instructions for those software instructions. Today's webinar, however, uh, what we're doing doesn't require any of the advanced features in Total Quilter. So whether you have Total Quilter or my Decorative Quilter for today's webinar, you can follow along with everybody. And the next thing I want to talk about is mousing around. So we're going to do, be, so let me start again, we're going to be doing a variety of mouse clicks today. If I want you to just do a normal left click, I'm going to just say click. I'm not going to say left click, I'm just going to say click. So that's a normal left click of the mouse. If I want you to right click, I'm specifically going to say right click. The other two types of clicks we're going to do would be a shift click. That's where you're going to hold down the shift button on your keyboard and then click the mouse and then let up on the shift key. And the last one is a click and drag where you're going to click, hold the mouse button down and then drag the cursor to create a shape or select something and then uh, let off the mouse button once you've dragged to the proper position. So those are the different types of mouse clicks we're going to do. Now to start out I want you to take your cursor and come up to your ruler bar at the top and right click and this is going to allow us to set up our workspace so we're all looking at the same thing. You want to make sure that you're in inches mode. You want to make sure that show grid is checked, that snap to grid is checked, and then finally come down here to grid settings and click that. And you want your horizontal and vertical grid settings to be 0.125 inches. So that is an eighth of an inch. You want to set it to 0.125. And your grid major, to start out with, we're going to go to a setting of 5 on both the horizontal and the vertical. So I'm changing mine to 5. And then go ahead and click OK to lock that in. And now you can see my grids. Uh, the purple lines have expanded a little bit. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up our thread chart. So to do that, you come down here to the thread chart selector button, click that, and you will get a variety of thread charts to choose from. The one you want to select is called Floriani Cotton. So I'm actually going to click on that. And when you do that, you will have a uh, thread palette down here that shows the available colors in that thread palette. Now the reason that we've chosen Floriani cotton is not because we expect you to actually stitch this out with Floriani cotton thread. In fact, we want you to use Floriani regular embroidery thread. But if we chose that as our thread palette, there's 360 colors. So not only would it fill up the whole screen, but we'd have to scroll around to find the colors that we need. Since this just has a limited 15 color palette, it's much easier for us to find and select the colors. So that's the reason we've chosen that one. So now we're going to actually start creating our design and we're going to do that to begin with by drawing our basic ladybug shape. And to do that we're going to use the built-in 
drawing tools that uh, automatically make a shape, and they're located right here. The default is a rectangle, but what you want to do is click the down arrow and select the ellipse or the circle right here. So when you do that, this will change to the circle. And then when you come down here into your design area, you'll see that the cursor changes to a crosshair with a little ellipse by it to tell us that's the mode that we're in. Now what we're going to do is click and drag a circle. So you want to start kind of somewhere up here and click and drag a circle out. And I'm not seeing that. Is this uh, being really laggy? Did not get a circle. Let me try one more time. There we go. Okay. So click and drag a circle. It uh, does not need to be any specific size or any specific shape. You can make it anything you want because we are going to actually fix it to the proper size and shape and position it properly in our next step. So once you've done that, you'll have a circle. It should be selected. You'll want to come over to your properties box over here and click the transform tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to set our height and width to make a little ellipse. Before we do that, you want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio is unchecked and that you are in inches mode. So check inches if you're not in inches. Um, and now we're going to change our width to 3.7. So I'm going to type over the value that was there, 3.7. And we want our height to be 4. So I'm going to change that to 4. And I'm going to click Apply to lock those changes in. And now you can see I have a little bit more of an ellipse. And this is going to become the body of our ladybug. Now I want to center this to my screen. And the center of my screen is right here, 0 and 0 on my ruler bars. Now I could select this. Uh, center of the design right here and drag it over into place. But I have a tool that's going to center it for us precisely and automatically. And it's right here under our alignment button. If I click that, you'll see you have a variety of alignment options, but only one of them is lit up. That's because most of these align objects to each other. And since we only have one object, there's no to each other to align to. So the only one that's lit up is this one here, which happens to be the exact one we want, which is center the design to the rulers. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to center it right to the rulers. So now it's in the perfect position. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this thin artwork line here. We're going to make it a little bit fatter so it's a little bit easier to see. And as we get further into it, you'll see why that's more important. But it's also going to help you at home see the video a little bit better. So what we're going to do is come over back to our properties box. Our artwork tab should be showing. And here's our pen width. The default for the pen width is 0, which is what we call a hairline. And uh, that is the smallest possible line, which is usually what we want. But sometimes we want to be able to see it thicker. So I'm going to change this to 1 millimeter and click Apply. And now you can see we've got a thicker line here. And it doesn't really change where that line is or how that line works. It's still just in the center there, that very thin line as far as the software is concerned. But visually, we see it as a thicker line, which can be helpful sometimes. The next thing we want to do is we want to change the color of this from the default, which was the slate blue. We want to change it to black. So I'm going to come down here to my color palette and click on that, and it is going to change that into black. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the head of our actual uh, ladybug. And we're going to do that by drawing another circle. So I'm going to come back and reselect my ellipse. And now I've got another ellipse that I can draw. And this time, we're going to click and drag it from this corner right here to this corner down right here. So the square that's made up of these four major grids, we're going to start up here and drag down here. Now, this is actually going to give us a perfect circle because we have snap to grid checked. And since we're drawing in a square, it's going to snap that to a perfect circle. Normally, when we want to make a perfect circle, we would hold down Control and click and drag. But we don't need to do that in this case because Snap to Grid is going to do it for us. So you're going to start right up here. And again, because we have Snap to Grid checked, you don't have to be super precise with it. 
So I'm going to click right in there, and you can see as I drag, it snaps right to the edges of the boundary of the grid line. And when I get down close to this edge down here, you can see that I've got a perfect circle. Now when I let off the mouse, you are going to have a nice perfect circle right in there. And the next thing I want to do once I've created that is also it's increase its pen width to 1 as well. So I'm going to come over to my Properties box in the Artwork tab, and I'm going to change the pen width to 1 and click Apply. And if I click off it now, you'll see I've got the basics of my ladybug shape. But I've got this line going through this circle and this circle intersecting this circle here. And what I really want is just an outline of the ladybug. So I can get there a couple different ways. I could come in here, select these objects, and with the shape tool I could start to split these shapes apart and then delete the lines that I didn't want. But there's a much faster way to do it, and it's with a tool that I don't think we've ever used in a webinar before, and it's called the Weld Tool. And to get that to happen, I need to select both of these. Easiest way to do that is come over to my Sequence View and click All Items. So now I've got them both selected. And my Weld Tool is right here. And what that's going to do is actually weld these two shapes together, get rid of anything that's overlapping, so it's one big shape in the outline of the shape that they both create. So watch what happens when I click the Weld Tool. You'll see that it gets rid of all the inner parts and just gives me the outline. So very powerful when you need to do it. Now what I want to do is I want to recenter this to my rulers because now that I have a bigger overall shape, you can see that the center of it's up here and no longer centered. So what I'm going to do is go back to my alignment tool, the same thing we just did, and recenter it to the rulers. And now I've got it recentered on my rulers. So now that we've done that, we're going to start to actually draw in the little circles that we're going to use to create the decorative dots on the back of our ladybug. In order to get those in the right position, we're going to change what our grid setting is. So to do that, we're going to come up to our ruler bar, right-click on it, and go back to grid settings here. And instead of having horizontal at 5 and 5, we're going to change it to 4 and 4, and that's going to give us a little bit tighter grid. So I'm going to click OK. So now we've got some smaller grid squares, and what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing our circles for the decorative dots um, in these grid boxes. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to select my ellipse tool one more time. And now I'm going to start with this box right here, which is from the center. You're going to go down like 3 and over 1. So it's right in here. And I'm going to start up in this corner, just like you did with the headpiece, and drag just down to the bottom of this box right here. And so that's going to give me a perfect circle in there. I'm going to let off the mouse. And that's going to give me my perfect first one. Now I'm going to come down to an over one, reselect my uh, circle tool, and I'm going to draw another circle right in there, reselect my circle. Now I'm going to come down to and back one to get a, oh, it didn't work, hold on, one more time, down to and back one, and right there, get my next one. We're going to continue around to do that around to the other side. So you're just going to keep repeating this kind of mirroring this on the other side. Whoops, I went too big. There we go. Now, you you want to keep going in this clockwise direction because if you were to start back up here and go this way, it would cause the machine to kind of move back up here and then stitch around this way. And this is just a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to come back here and click the ellipse tool one more time, put in another dot. And for some reason, I think it's because of our webinar software, it's not always picking that up. All right, so there we go one more time, and let me do it one more time. There we go. All right, now we've got our six dots perfectly positioned for our black circles, and they will eventually become our black circles. But before we create the stitches in there, we're going to now create the placement and tack down lines for our zipper and pieces of fabric. So to do that, we're going to do that by directly drawing in some run stitches. And the first thing we want to do when we draw in a run stitch is select our run stitch tool. We're going to come over to our properties and we're going to start changing some things over here in the properties. First thing I'm going to change for this first set of stitches since it's a placement line is the stitch length because I don't need it to be this tight for just a placement line. I'm going to change it to a stitch length of 4 and click apply. And I want to stitch this in a different color 
So I'm going to come down and choose sky blue to draw this in. And now what we want to do is we want to draw a box with these stitches, basically starting here, going to here, coming down to this point, over to here, and back up to here. So to do that, I'm just going to click right here, and I'm going to come over here and click. And again, because I have Snap to Grid turned on still, I don't have to be super precise with where I'm clicking. So I'm going to click down here, and then finally back up to where we started and click one more time. Then I'm going to right-click to lock those stitches in. Now, I realize that's a little bit hard to see right now, so I'm going to come over and I'm going to turn on 3D, which is going to give us a 3D view of the stitches to make it easier for us to see. I'm going to come back and click my Run Stitch tool one more time, because now what I want to do is actually draw in the tack down stitches for my zipper, and I want that to be a bean stitch. So I'm going to come over here to my single run, and I'm going to change it to a bean. Now the default is three repeats, which is fine, but now what I want to do is change my stitch length down to three to get a little bit tighter stitch, and click Apply. And now we're going to change the color because we want it to stop after this light blue so we can put our zipper down within these lines and then have it then start up again and stitch the zipper. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose light brown as my next color. And now when I start putting in stitches, they're going to go in in light brown. And what we're going to do is we're not going to make a box. We're going to make a U. We're going to basically make it about where we did, except uh, on the left and right sides, we're going to be one box in. So I'm going to come along the top line of stitches here, one grid box in, and click. I'm going to come down to the bottom, straight down, and click. Over one grid box from the other side, and click one, and come back up to the top one grid box over, and I'm going to now right-click to lock those in. So that gives us our placement and tack down for the zipper. And now we need to start putting in placement and tack down lines for the rest of our fabric. So again, we're going to make sure that run stitch is selected. We're going to come over to our properties box, change back to a single run, and this time I'm going to change to a stitch length of 2.5, and I'm going to click apply. Again, we want the color to change, so this time I'm going to click charcoal, and we're going to put in a little line of stitches down here for the flap for our uh, bottom of the zipper. And where we want that to be is basically on this major grid line, which is where the bottom of these stitches are right here. But we want it to be right here at the edge of our outline of the ladybug. So I'm going to come over here to the uh, right side, start over here, and I'm going to click. And I'm going to find the opposite point right over here straight across and click and right click to lock that set of stitches in. And once I've done that, now I'm going to put in the placement and the uh, seams for our fabric. And to do that, once again, I am going to change the thread color. This time I'm going to click slate blue. And I don't need to change anything over here in my run stitch properties because that's all OK. And what I'm going to do is start down here, which is close to where this stitch ended. And I'm going to come down basically right on this same line of stitches, but I'm going to come down right here to the closest point at the edge of our outline of the ladybug. So I'm going to come right down here and click, and this time I'm going to come all the way up here to the head of the ladybug, so right in here and click. So it's a little bit longer stitch than before, and then I'm going to right click to lock that set of stitches in. And then I'm going to come over here. And before I do that, actually, I need to change the thread color one more time. I need to now go to light brown one more time. So I'm going to go to light brown. I'm going to come up to here and click. And I'm going to come all the way down to here and click. And then I'm going to right click to lock those set of stitches in. Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink of water here. Uh, thank you for your patience for that. And the last set of stitches I need to put in for our zipper and fabric in this step is for the actual uh, tack down final stitch of the fabric. 
And to do that, we're going to change our thread color one more time. So this time I'm going to choose wine. We're going to make another set of U-shaped stitches. This time we're going to start up here, kind of right here, and we are going to uh, click right on this stitch line right here, and we are going to come all the way down below the design, so kind of right in here, and click, and then come over and back up. So I'm going to click one in and up here. Uh, actually, I'm going to be straight on this line, rather, right here. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to come down to right here, and then I'm going to come over to right here, and then come up to right here, and right-click to lock that set of stitches in. Now, this set of stitches is actually too big for what we want, but it was easy to put that in this size because of our snap to grid and where we wanted it. So we're actually going to make this set of stitches a different size using our transform. So we're going to come over and click our select icon to select the last thing we drew. So it selects those stitches. And I'm going to come over here to my transform tab. And what I want to do is make sure that maintain aspect ratio is still unchecked and inches is still unchecked. And if you've been doing this contiguously, it should be. What you want to do is change the width to 0.37, so I'm going to put in 37 there, and you want your height to be 3.9, so I'm going to put in 3.9 and click Apply, and that's going to bring those stitches in right there to the proper uh, height and width for our final stitching. Now what we need to do is go in and actually decorate our dot. So to do that, we're going to come over to our sequence view, scroll up to the top. And what we want to do is select all of these circles. So we're going to start with the bottom circle right here and click on it. And what you want to do is move the mouse up so you're pointing at the top circle, not this ladybug shape piece, but the top straight circle, which should be the second thing down. And now you're going to hold down the shift key and then click on it and then let off the shift key, and that will select everything in between our two clicks, which saves us a bunch of cl control clicking. That's another way we could have done it, but this is a shortcut way to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a stitch to fill these in, and to get a nice decorative look, we're actually going to come down to our one clicks down here and click the shape echo. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in a circle inside that circle. Now, this circle is really a bit of a misnomer because the way this actually stitches, it's more like a spiral, and you'll see that in a second. So when I click this, it's going to apply that spiral pattern in there. Now, if this was a big quilt block, this density, the spacing between these stitches, might actually be nice for this pattern. Of course, it would probably also be much bigger, but since we're doing this on a little tiny area, we need to come over and adjust the density to fill these in a little bit better and make a much tighter spiral. So we do that by changing the density. So I'm going to come over here and change it to a density of 1 and click Apply, and now you can see I've got a nice tight spiral in there. And the last thing we need to do is we actually need to come to our Commands tab here, and we're going to change the End command from Normal to a trim. So we're going to change it to a trim, and we're going to click Apply. Now you won't see anything change over here, but what's happened is that it's actually going to, for some machines, it's going to cause the thread to trim between tr here and here. Some machines will trim automatically between here and here, so changing this wouldn't have made any difference. But for those that won't, and will trim based on this command, it will cause it to trim. The last thing we need to do is change the color of these from blue to black. So we're going to come over to our black, which we already have in our design color palette, and click it, and now those are black. If I click off them, you can see we've got these nice black dots there. The last thing we need to do is put in one more run stitch for our fabric, and it's going to be a little uh, flap for the zipper up here. Uh, or actually, I, let me rephrase that. It's going to be that come the head of our um, ladybug. So we're going to come back and then once again choose our uh, run stitch tool. You want to come over this time 
and change the type here from a single run back to a bean. You should already be at 2.5, so you want to leave your stitch length there. If it's not, set it to 2.5 and leave your bean repeats at 3. And we're going to, again, make this a different color. So we're going to come back and click charcoal. I click this one, or I can click the one that's already in our design. And uh, now what I'm going to do is draw in a run stitch. And where I'm going to draw it is basically right from here over to here. So I'm kind of even with this bend in the design, this point in the design here, and a couple of clicks out. So I'm going to start right there. I'm going to come over and find the opposite point right over here in a straight line across and right click and that will put that set of stitches in. The last thing we need to do to create the stitches for our ladybug shape is to actually create the tack down and the placement lines for the actual outline of the ladybug. To do that we're going to use this artwork that we already created in the shape of the ladybug and just turn that into stitches. So if you can't see it, scroll back up to the top of the design here and now you just want to click the ladybug shape in the artwork and we are going to change this into a run stitch by coming down here and clicking our run stitch. And I said change it into and it really doesn't change it into it. It makes a copy of it in a run stitch. So I'm going to click that and it will make a copy of it. You see it made a copy down here at the very bottom of my sequence view. And we actually need two of these. So one will become the placement and tack down for the first piece of fabric and uh, or just a tack down for the first piece of fabric and the second one will become the placement and the tack down for our foam and our fabric. So to do that easily, I'm just going to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to come up to my copy icon and click it. And then I'm just going to click my paste icon right next to it. And now I've got two, but they're both in sky blue and I want one to be a different color so that the machine stops between them. So I'm going to change this one, the last one, it should already be selected into light brown by coming over here and clicking on light brown. And so now I've got all of my stitches created for this. The only thing I need to do is save this. So I'm going to come up here and click the save icon. And I'm going to put this in my October 2017 projects folder, which if you uh, have downloaded the project you will already have created. So I'm going to uh, show you where this is. It's in C. Floriani Designs MDQ Project October, October 2017. And you can see I've already got some files in there. And I probably want to name this Ladybug Coin Purse. We already gave you one name that and I could just save it right over the top of that. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type it I'm going to give it a new name, and I'm just going to give it My Ladybug Coin Purse. And uh, you don't have to save it here, but this is a convenient place to save it. You can actually save it anywhere you want. Just remember where you put it. And click Save, and that will save, by default, the WAF version of the file, which is what you want to do in case you ever want to come back and modify it. The next thing we need to do is we need to save it in our machine format so that we can actually stitch it. So for that, I'm going to click come to my file menu and click save as, and it's going to take me to the same directory. It's going to give me that same file because WAF is the default. But what I'm going to do is click the drop down here, and I would change my machine format. So I could change to any stitch file format that I have. I happen to have a baby block brother multi needle, so I'm going to save it in that format. Click save, and now I have saved that machine format version of this file. Now normally we would close this up and be done, but we need to do one more thing to create a outline so that we can print it on our applique wonder material or our applestick material so that we can cut out the material in the shape of our ladybug and the same uh, goes for our SOFAB foam. We're actually going to cut them all together. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to take and come up to our sequence view. We're going to reselect that ladybug artwork. And I could copy and paste this to a new screen and then print it. That would work fine. But I also have a shortcut way of doing that. And that's with this uh, cut preview. 
here. Now this is normally designed if you wanted to send something to a digital cutter, but we're going to use it just as a convenient way to get our artwork over to a new screen so we can print it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that and you can see what happens is it brings that artwork into a brand new screen for us and shows us what it would look like if we cut it out on a digital cutter so it filled it in for us. Now we don't want to actually cut this on a digital cutter um, so I'm going to click on it to select it and I'm just simply going to remove the fill by unchecking the fill here and clicking apply. And just like the line width, that fill really doesn't do anything to the shape. It's just a visual way for us to see what it looks like if it was filled in with a color or a piece of fabric. So we want to be able to, first of all, minimize the amount of ink that we're going to print, but we also want to be make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So we have eliminated the fill. And you can see I've still got this nice thick one millimeter line, which is what I actually want. The next thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and print this out. So to print it out, what you would do is you would uh, put uh, paper or applique wonder or apple stick into your printer and then you would come up here to our print preview and click that. Now I just kind of glossed over what you're going to print on because we're going to deal with this in a little more detail when we get to the construction. But when you do that, you're going to get a preview of the first page here. And what you want to do, first of all, is come to your settings and make sure that your margins are all set to zero. Make sure you have print actual size checked. That's important. And if when you clicked the print preview, you didn't see anything, it's because you didn't have artwork checked. So when you click artwork right here, you will start to see what we are working with because we don't actually have any stitches. Now you can see I've got removed jump stitches checked here. I'm not going to worry about it because we don't have any stitches. It doesn't matter. I'm going to click OK to lock those settings in. And now what you would do is you would come up here to your print dialog and print. And just let me show you one other thing here in settings. If you needed to change your printer from your default, you could do that right here in the print setup. So the next thing you would do is you would come here and print it on your printer. All right. So that completes the software section of our project. So let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation so we can move on to the construction details. So here's our picture once again. I'll click on that to go to the next slide. Okay, seems to be going fast now. Good. Um, let's first talk about the materials that you're going to require. So you're going to need some Floriani nylon no-shell mesh stabilizer. doesn't matter what color and you probably want to use the non-fusible version. Next you'll want some Floriani Applique Wonder or Quilter Select Applistic and which one you choose is going to be dependent a little bit on how you print uh, or what you have in stock. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. You'll need some RNK SoFab foam. You don't need a whole heck of a lot of it. If you have some scraps you can use that but you'll need at least a 6 by 6 inch piece. You'll need some RNK Embroidery Perfection Tape. That's our pink tape. You'll need a 7 inch black nylon zipper. You want to make sure it's nylon and not metal. And you will need some red and black Floriani embroidery thread and some Quilter Select bobbin thread. The bobbin thread color really doesn't matter. Uh, you will need some Teflon pressing sheet or parchment paper. And you will need at least a four and a half, four by five inch or 100 by 120 millimeter minimum hoop size. And lastly, it'd be nice to have an RNK precision turning tool because we're going to turn this inside out and the turning tool really helps with that. In terms of the fabric that you'll require, you need two different colors. You'll need red and black. You'll need in the red fabric one, one and a half, or excuse me, let me start again, one one inch by two and a half inch piece for the zipper bottom. And you'll need two two and a half inch by five inch pieces for the top sides of our ladybug. In the black fabric, you're going to need one one and a half inch by two inch piece for the head of the ladybug and two four and a half inch by five inch pieces for the back of the ladybug and the inside lining. So now let's talk about prepping our applique wonder or apple stick material. As I said earlier, you're going to want to print that ladybug shape on the paper side of the applique wonder or apple stick material. You want to make sure that you use an inkjet printer to print and not a laser printer. 
If you don't have an inkjet, or for some reason you do not want to print directly on that material, you can print this onto a normal piece of paper. And then what you would do is you would put the applique wonder or applestick material over the top and then trace the shape with a pen on top of the material. Now you are going to go, of course you're going to trace on the paper side. Now if you're going to trace, I highly recommend that you use applestick material instead of applique wonder. Because one of the things that's different about applestick versus applique wonder is applestick was designed specifically to be easy to trace. So its backing paper is nice and thin and transparent, so you can easily trace designs through it. Uh, whereas Applique Wonder has a thicker, more uh, opaque piece of paper there. So it's not impossible, but it's much harder to trace through it. So if you're going to trace it, use Applestick. Next, you'll want to rough cut out that piece of Applestick or Applique Wonder. Don't fussy cut it. Just rough cut it. You can just cut a square of the material around the shape of the ladybug. And then what you want to do is place that down onto the fusible side of the SoFab foam piece. Now the fusible side is the shiny side. So then if your SoFab foam piece is smaller than the piece of applique wonder, uh, you probably don't need to do the next step. But if your SoFab foam is bigger, then you'll want to put a piece of Teflon pressing sheet or parchment paper over the top so that your iron doesn't stick to the pieces of the SOFAB foam that are sticking out from underneath the applique wonder. And then you want to fuse it all together. And finally, now once it's cooled, you can fussy cut the ladybug shape to the printed outline. So what you'll be left with is a piece of SOFAB foam with a piece of applique wonder or applestick material fused to it. Uh, and uh, you do not, at this point, want to remove the backing paper. But when we remove it later, you'll have a sticky piece of SOFAB foam. So having completed that, let's go on an embroider. Now, before we do that, just want to uh, say some important things to you here. So most of the color changes in this design are there to make the machine stop between the various steps. And that's so we can you know, put our pieces of fabric down, fold the fabric, put our zipper down, etc so the machine stops in between those steps. You can leave the same color thread in, even though your machine is going to call for a different thread color. And as you could see, as we went through all of these color changes in the design, there's a lot of different thread colors in there. In reality, the actual design is only going to stitch out with two colors, red and black. So you can start out with a red thread in the machine and leave it in up until the very last few steps where we'll tell you to change to black. And that's how I actually did it. However, if you have a multi-needle machine, you want to make sure that you go into your control panel on the machine and insert stop commands to make sure the machine stops every time it wants to change color. If you don't do that, it's going to go and pick up and grab the next thread and start stitching, and you won't be able to put your fabric and zipper and other things down. Also, for this particular design, at various points, you're going to be instructed to slow the stitch speed down when sewing across the zipper. You do not want to forget to do this because if you stitch too fast, you can break the needle and or move the zipper out of position. We don't want to do that. So uh, you want to make sure that you follow the instructions to slow the machine down. Don't miss any of those steps. Now, if you want to play it safe, you can actually stitch the whole design starting out on the slow speed, slowest as your machine can go, and it really won't make a huge difference at the speed that this project stitches out, So, because there just aren't that many stitches in it. And that way, if you miss slowing the machine down, you won't hurt anything. So now let's go ahead and embroider the design. To do that first step is you're going to load the Ladybug Coin Purse design into your machine. You'll want to hoop up a piece of Floriani nylon no-show mesh stabilizer. Get it nice and tight in the hoop. Attach the hoop to the machine and stitch the first color, which will be the placement line for the zipper. Next thing you want to do is center that zipper. And when we talk about center, we're talking about it left to right between the placement lines. You want to be very precise when you do that. And of course, you want to try and center it pretty much up and down as well but side to side is much more important. 
And note that the zipper head and the bottom will extend well beyond the stitch lines, as you can see in the picture here. Another thing that's important is you want to make sure that the zipper head is at the top. And although I didn't say it in the text, make sure that the zipper is closed at this point. And you want to take some embroidery perfection tape and tape the zipper down to the stabilizer and the hoop to hold it in place. When you do that, recheck the zipper to make sure that it's perfectly centered. Because if it's not, the top stitching might not be centered when we get to the final stages of the project. You want to also make sure, and this is also very important, that the tape is well outside the stitch lines. You do not want to stitch through embroidery perfection tape. If you do, it will make a mess. Trust me on this. All right. Next thing you want to do is slow your stitching speed down to the slowest setting, and then go ahead and stitch the next color, which will stitch the left, bottom, and right sides of the zipper down. Next, you'll want to remove the hoop from the machine, remove the embroidery perfection tape, and trim the bottom of the zipper very close to the stitch lines. Now flip the hoop upside down and carefully trim away the no-show mesh from the back of the zipper, leaving about an eighth of an inch away from the inside of the stitch lines. And you're going to make a, basically a hole in the nylon no-show mesh so you can see the zipper through it. And then go ahead and reattach the hoop to the machine. Now you'll want to center the small red fabric triangle right side down at the end of the zipper. And you can use the stitch lines to do that. Slow your machine down again to the slowest setting and stitch the next color to stitch this fabric down. Now you'll want to fold that fabric down over the seam and finger press it into place. Next, you'll want to center one of the large red fabric rectangles right side down along the far left stitch line. So that was the placement line for our zipper. And you can see that the bulk of the fabric is over to the right. And next, you'll stitch the next color to sew that fabric to the zipper. Next, you'll want to fold that fabric out of the way over to the left, and then place the remaining red piece down, this time along the right uh, rectangle, uh, along the right stitch line, rather. And again, that one also wants to be right side down. And again, the bulk of this now wants to be over on the left. And <coughs> you will, excuse me, stitch the next color to sew the fabric to the zipper. Now what you'll want to do is fold back both fabrics back about 1 16th of an inch away from the zipper. So normally when we fold fabrics in these in the hoop projects, fold it right up against the seam line. Hold on a second, let me get a drink of water here. Okay, I'm better. Now <coughs> for this, excuse me, maybe I'm not. For this one, uh, you're not going to be folding it right up against that seam. You're going to be folding it so that it's about a sixteenth of an inch away from the zipper. And uh, that's going to uh, give us a minimal zipper opening there. And you'll want to finger press those in place and then secure the tops and bottoms of these fabrics with embroidery perfection tape. Once again, making sure that that tape is well away from the zipper and at the very edges of the fabric so we don't stitch through it. Next, what you want to do is change the top thread to red, if you didn't start out with red, and stitch the next color to top stitch around the zipper. And notice we've shown it to you here in black, so you can see it, but it actually wants to be in red, so it disappears. And next, you'll change the top thread to black. We're going to go ahead and leave black in for the rest of it. And stitch the next color to stitch our decorative dots. And then you can remove the tape from the fabric. Next, what you want to do is move that zipper head to about a half inch up from the bottom. So you want to move that zipper head down to about a half inch away from the bottom. And then center the small black fabric piece. Uh, I realize I have a typo there. It says back instead of black. So center the small black fabric piece right side down along the top stitching. Slow the machine down once again and then stitch the next color to stitch that fabric down. Next, what you want to do is remove the hoop from the machine, cut away the excess zipper from the top, get it as close to the stitch line as you can, and then fold the black fabric up and 
finger press it into place. Then reattach the hoop to the machine. Center the first large black fabric right side down on the design and stitch the next color to stitch that fabric down. And we've shown that to you in white here, but it'll be in black. Next, what you'll want to do is remove the paper backing from the trim SoFab foam piece, which should be in the shape of the ladybug. And you'll want to center that shape within the placement lines, sticky side down, and then you'll want to finger press it into place. Now, if you don't get it perfectly aligned within the stitch lines the first time, uh, you can reposition it many, many times. So you can peel it back up and put it back down. Uh, so if you don't get it perfectly aligned, don't panic. Just peel it back up and press it down. That's one of the nice things about Applique Wonder or Apple Stick is that it's repositionable. So once you get it in place, next you're going to take the remaining large black fabric piece and you're going to put it on the design. This time it wants to be right side up. And then you want to stitch the next color to stitch down that fabric. Now you can remove the design from the hoop and you want to take your scissors and trim a scant quarter inch around the seam line. And then you can open up the zipper all the way and turn the design inside out using the R and K precision and turning tool to help you with the corners. Press the back side flat and enjoy your coin purse. And that completes this webinar for October. We want to thank everybody for attending. We hope you'll use this video along with the printed PDF instructions to recreate this project at home. And we hope you'll come back next month for our next exciting project for Total Quilter and My Decorative Quilter. And next month's webinar will not be live. It will be pre-recorded. So uh, it will be available for download right around the first of the month along with the project instructions. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to DJ Anderson. Thanks, Mark, and great job on presenting the Ladybug Coin person. We do look forward to seeing you guys next time. Um, be watching for the project and video at the beginning of November for the next one. And um, we will see you soon. And don't forget to um, post your finished coin purses up onto uh, our Floriani webpage. Which I'm definitely. not one our Facebook page. Our Facebook De page. Yeah, definitely. We love to see um, the projects that you're creating using um, the projects that we provide. So please do share um, your projects and any other projects that you do and that you create in the software. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody.